There's two ways to get someone high. Give them drugs or deliver a speech to them. A good speech really can get you high. When a speaker shares with their audience the results they can get in their lives, our reward chemical dopamine is activated. When you feel a connection with a speaker's personality and story, the connection chemical oxytocin is coursing through your veins. When a speaker tells you you can aspire to more and raise your status in life, our feel-good chemical serotonin is released. And if you can get a ripple of laughter coursing through the room, then there's a nice little mix of endorphins in the chemical cocktail. Biochemistry can be activated just as much by your words as it can by any substance. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that. You might know already that my speaking journey began in 2016 at Brendan Bouchard's Experts Academy. I was nine months into a journey and a search for my purpose and direction after my dad had died. And at this event, I found it. There was lots of aspects of this event that helped me to find that purpose, but one of the most powerful parts was actually one of the last things that we did. After four days of attending this event, it all came down to the final half an hour. Brendan took 800 people through a group visualization. And in this visualization, we saw ourselves after Experts Academy. What we were going to do, who we were going to be, what we were going to change and influence as a result of what we'd learned at this event. And as I started to go through seeing the possibilities and potential for myself, I burst into tears because it was the first time I'd really truly seen those possibilities and those potentials. I knew in that moment that my purpose, my destiny was to become a speaker. That final exercise changed my life forever. And that's when I witnessed the power of public speaking. And it was through that experience that I realized that if I was to have any of that same impact and influence on other people's lives, I need to learn this skill. Now talk about leaving your audience on a high. That was six years ago now, and it has shaped and changed the direction of my life as a result. That is the power that you can have with the ending of your speeches. If you get that right, if you send your audience off in the right way, you truly can change their lives forever. There's a couple of suggestions that I have that can help you to activate some of those chemical feelings, not because we want to get our audience in a, in a rah-rah hyped up state, but because when you can connect with people deep into their physiology and their psychology, that's what creates the transformation. I'm a product of that successful ending. And I want your audience to be the product of that successful ending as well. The first way that you can end on a high is by appealing to the collective, by tapping into that shared identity that your audience have. Some of the most successful speeches in history have used this method. Think of I have a dream. The final words of I have a dream, free at last, free at last, thank God almighty, we are free at last. That's an appeal to the collective. If you watch every US inauguration speech, the final line is pretty much always, God bless you, God bless the United States of America. Appealing to that collective identity is a hugely powerful and rousing way to leave your audience, to get them amped up and buzzed up, but not just in a superficial way, but getting them to tap into something larger than themselves. If you want to impact your audience, you've got to get them seeing outside of themselves, seeing different possibilities, seeing different realities. 
And you can do that by appealing to the collective. This is where you start to tap into some of that social chemicals, your oxytocin, your serotonin. That's what creates that feel good feeling. But it's not just about the superficial biochemistry. It's that long lasting change that comes as a result. It's the change in civil rights because of I have a dream. It's the change in policy, foreign policy, domestic policy, as a result of those inauguration speeches. That is the power of appealing to the collective. And it's a powerful way for you to finish your speeches as well. The second way to end on a high is through challenging your audience, is appealing to their better nature, is appealing to their aspirations, saying you can do more and you can be more. And again, some of the most impactful speeches in history have made these challenges. It wasn't the way he ended his speech, but JFK's we choose to go to the moon speech was full of challenge, full of saying we can do better. We can do this because we choose to do this. And if we just make that decision, it will happen. Moving forward to another US president, Barack Obama, when he accepted the presidential office, the first African-American president, he issued a challenge. The challenge was, yes, we can. Yes, we can. That's a, that's a challenge of aspiration and optimism and saying, we've got a lot of things to change, but we can change those things. And when you make that challenge to the audience, it's not just about a basic call to action of you should get more sleep or you should <laughs> eat more vegetables or you need to market in your business more. This is really appealing to those higher values that we all have as humans, this desire to grow and this desire to contribute. And if you issue that challenge at the end of the speech, you'll be activating the serotonin, the social status chemical, you'll be triggering that dopamine, that feeling of reward and goal attainment and goal chasing. That's the biochemistry that gets activated in the challenge. And it's only by challenging people that we really enable and empower them to step up. And if I think all the way back to those years ago at that visualization exercise, that was actually Brendan's way of challenging us by getting us to see the possibilities, what we were going to do, what we were going to be, what we were going to change after that event, he was allowing us to issue our own challenge to ourselves of saying, I'm not just going to come to this event, feel that warm buzz, nice to travel out of the country, and then come back home and just go back to the same life that I was living before. I'm going to choose something different for myself. And actually, Brendan was quite smart in getting us to issue that challenge to ourselves because we're more likely to take on something that comes from us rather than something that comes from an external source. Our Facebook group, Rise and Inspire Speakers, provides you with a safe, supportive community to develop the skills to get your message out into the world. We host a virtual summit, Inspire Week, within the group every month where you can sign up for a 30 minute slot to speak live in the group. This is a free opportunity you can sign up for month after month to practice your skills, try new things, and refine aspects of your story and message. There is a ton of educational content that gets pumped into this group. You can access ongoing educational resources that help you gain more confidence on camera, create more compelling speech content, and develop a deeper connection with your ideal audiences. Speaking of connection, the members of our community are fantastic. They are like-minded people who just like you want to make a difference in the world and will cheer you on and encourage you every step of the way. If you want to master your virtual speaking skills, then this is the place to be. The third way that you can leave your audience on a high is incredibly risky but when you pull it off, it might just be the most successful ending of it all. It sounds simple, but it's the joke. If you can end with a joke and have your audience roaring with laughter on the very last line of your speech, they're going to be eating out of your hand. Really, it's just, it's such an intense and powerful connection that you form in that moment. And it's, really the highest of the high that you can often get to as a speaker engaging with your audience. 
I remember the, the first national championship that I won in Toastmasters. It was the evaluation contest. Someone comes up and delivers a speech and all of the contestants come up turn by turn and then evaluate that speech and say what was good and, and what suggestions do you have. And the venue that we were in this particular year, it had this really dodgy layout. There was a stage, but there was a pillar right in the middle of the stage. And everyone throughout the day had been having issues with this pillar. It right in the middle of the stage, meaning that it was hard to connect with both sides of the audience at the same time. You'd, you'd be standing a little bit behind the pillar and you, you couldn't see the audience here. Or you'd have to stand in front of the pillar and it ended up that the audience were actually <laughs> almost at your armpits. It was a really awkward setup. And what I saw here was an opportunity. Rather than the pillar impeding me, I was going to use the pillar to my advantage. I planned the very last line of my evaluation. I was going to go up to the pillar and I was going to say, if you take on these suggestions, you can take your speech a full 180. And I spun around the pillar like a pole dancer. And that was incredibly risky. I didn't know if the pillar would have the, the right circumference or the right surface for me to, to skid round. I could have fallen flat on my ass right at the end of the speech. And talking about finishing the speech on a high, that would have been finishing the speech on a low. And I maybe would have got a laugh, but not the type of laugh I was looking for. If I landed on my backside, the speech was over. I would have lost that contest. But I took a risk. I took a risk on trying to end on something that was different, unique, funny. And so I span around that pillar, it held, I held, and I finished off on that final line. And the audience burst into laughter. And I won the contest that day, my first ever national championship. And to this day, I'm convinced the person in second place had a better evaluation than me. They talked about more stuff, they went into more depth. But I took some time to think about how did I want to end? And that ending was what stuck with people. That's the power of the ending that even if your middle doesn't quite work out, if you can leave people on that high, you can send them off with the impression that you want and have the impact that you want on them. It's incredibly risky, but when you pull it off, boy, does it work. <laughs> if you can bring that joke or that humor right into your final line, Leave the audience laughing. When the audience are laughing, it activates your endorphins. It's one of the most powerful highs that you can feel. It's the high that comes through heroin. So that's the not so nice method of achieving that high. The, the nicer method of achieving that high is through things like laughter. Can you leave your audience with that high or any of the other highs that we've talked about today? If you get the ending of your speech right, it can make the difference between your speech being good and competent, but forgettable, or perhaps being a little bit raw and unrefined, but powerful and everlasting. That's the effect that you want to have on your audience. There are so many people in the world who you only ever have the opportunity to speak to once. Can you make the most of that opportunity to impact their lives?